Hey, everyone, remember that article about water on the moon? You know, the one we talked about diving into? Yeah, the one that's got everyone buzzing. Yeah, that's the one. Well, get ready for a lunar plot twist. What we thought we knew about good old H2O on our rocky neighbor just got a major shakeup. You're telling me. We're talking about more than just those icy patches hiding in the shadows at the lunar poles. Way more. This new research is saying water on the moon might be, like, way more common and way more accessible than anyone ever imagined. It really is incredible. For real. This has huge implications for the future of lunar exploration, doesn't it? I mean, imagine if we could actually tap into those water sources. What I found so fascinating is how they even figured this out. Like they found a way to detect water, not just by chance, but systematically. It's pretty wild, right? Think about it this way. How would you try to figure out what a cake is made of just by looking at it from across the room? Hmm. You could probably get some of the ingredients. Yeah, but you wouldn't be 100% sure. Now, imagine you had a special device, and this device could analyze the light reflecting off that cake and could actually tell you its exact composition. Wow. That's some sci-fi stuff right oh, there. Oh, right. Well, that's essentially what's happening here with this lunar water discovery. No way. So are we talking about, like, special telescopes or satellites? Exactly. In this case, the eyes doing the looking were on board India's Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft. The Chandrayaan-1. Okay, got it. It had this instrument called the Moon Mineralogy Mapper, or M3 for short. M3. Catchy. I like it. So this M3, it acts like a super-powered camera. Right. right. But instead of capturing colors like we see... It's capturing infrared colors, which is a type of light that's invisible to us. Invisible to us. Interesting. Yeah. And get this, every substance out there reflects sunlight differently in this infrared spectrum, creating a unique fingerprint. M3 captured these fingerprints on the moon, and that's how they found the water. Whoa, hold on. So they're saying there's actual water, like H2O, just chilling out on the moon's surface. Well, not exactly water in its liquid form, but they found evidence of water molecules. And a close relative, hydroxyl. Hydroxyl. Okay, I have to admit my chemistry is a little rusty. Think of it this way. Imagine a water molecule playing a game of tag with the sun, and sometimes it loses a hydrogen atom and becomes hydroxyl. Like a cosmic game of tag. I love that visual. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and this hydroxyl, it's chemically active and can actually combine with other hydroxyls to form water again. So it's like finding one half of a cosmic recipe. You know, the other half has to be out there somewhere. Exactly. So where did they find these watery fingerprints, these hydroxyl hideouts? And what makes this discovery so different from what we thought we knew about lunar water before? That's the really interesting part. This water isn't just tucked away in some dark corner. It's in sun-baked rocks and soil across various latitudes, even areas near the equator. Near the equator. Wait, I thought most of the lunar water we knew about was locked away as ancient ice in those super cold, shadowy craters at the poles. Right, but this is different. This water, or at least some of it, seems to be much more recent, and it's constantly being replenished. Whoa, so like a constantly refreshing water supply. This is blowing my mind. I know, right? It yeah. changes everything. So we're talking about, like, actual water, or at least its chemical building blocks, <laughs> just kind of scattered all over the place on the moon, even in places we always thought were bone dry. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's wild. So where did it even come from? Are we talking like cometary deliveries? Or is there some kind of lunar spring we just didn't know about? Well, in a way, you could think of the moon as a giant sponge that's been soaking up water for billions of years. Giant space sponge. That's awesome. It's the visual, right? Totally. But if it's been soaking up water for billions of years, like you're saying, shouldn't it be like completely full by now? And why are we just now finding this out? Like, why haven't we seen evidence of all this water before? Those are great questions. Here's the thing. The moon isn't just holding onto this water forever. It's also slowly releasing it back out into space. Remember how we were talking about the solar wind slowly breaking down water molecules into hydroxyl? Yeah, like that cosmic game of tag. Exactly. Over millions of years, that process, combined with other things like, you know, micrometeoroid impacts, creates kind of an equilibrium. An equilibrium. Right. Water gets trapped in the lunar rocks and soil, slowly releases back out, then gets replenished from various sources. It's actually a really dynamic process. And honestly, it's only recently that we've had instruments sensitive enough to pick up on all of this. Wow. A delicate balance of cosmic forces at play right in our celestial backyard. I'm curious, though, how much water are we actually talking about here? I mean, is this enough to actually make a difference for, like, future lunar explorers? 
Well, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? And while this particular research didn't give us an exact number, it definitely suggests that the amount of water present, especially when you factor in the hydroxyl, could be pretty significant. We have to remember, we're not just talking about like having a sip of water. Right, it's way more than that. We're talking about the potential to actually extract oxygen for breathable air and hydrogen for rocket fuel. That's incredible. We're talking about living off the land, well, living off the moon in this case. Exactly. That would change everything for lunar exploration. Absolutely. Just imagine a future where the moon is like a refueling station. A refueling station. Yeah. For missions further into our solar system or even as a base camp for scientific research, you yeah. know, for resource extraction and maybe even, dare I say it, lunar tourism. Okay, now you're talking. Sign me up for that lunar getaway package. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We still don't know how this water is distributed across the moon. Are we talking like vast underground reservoirs here or more like little pockets of water trapped in the rocks and soil? To figure that out, we need to understand a little bit about the moon's geology. The lunar surface, it's made up of different types of rocks. And of course, each type has a different capacity to hold water. So for instance, the darker areas we see on the moon, those are called the lunar maria, and they're mostly made of basaltic rock, similar to what we have in Hawaii, actually. Oh, huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, and these basaltic rocks, they tend to hold less water compared to the lighter colored highlands, which are made of a type of rock called a northosite. Okay, so if we're searching for the areas with the most water, we need to head for the highlands. You got it. And that's where those watery fingerprints we were talking about earlier become really important. Because by analyzing the distribution of these water and hydroxyl signatures across the lunar surface, we can essentially create a treasure map. A treasure map. Exactly. A map leading us to the areas with the most potential for future exploration, for building those lunar bases, and of course, for resource extraction. It's like we're on a lunar treasure hunt. But instead yeah. of gold, we're after something even more valuable, water. It's a great analogy. And just like any good treasure hunt, we need a map. Luckily, it sounds like we've got one. We do. By analyzing these watery fingerprints, we can pinpoint the most promising locations on the moon. That's so cool. Speaking of lunar mysteries, mm. what about that whole thing with lunar water seeming to move with the sun? Did this research offer any new insights into that? It did. And the explanation is actually pretty straightforward. Basically, it's not that the water itself is actually migrating across the lunar surface. Oh, so it's not like flowing rivers or anything? Nope, nothing like that. Wow. It's more about how the sunlight interacts with the very top layer of the lunar soil. Okay. This layer's got its own unique composition and texture, and that's what creates this illusion of movement as the angle of the sunlight changes. It's kind of like those optical illusions. Where the image seems to change depending on how you look at it. Exactly. Huh. <laughs> The moon's tricking us. I love it. It's pretty neat. And what's even more interesting is that this understanding of the lunar surface helps explain another observation from past missions. Which is? Remember those iconic images of the Apollo rover tracks? Oh, of course. Those crisp <gasps> imprints on the moon's surface always gets me. Those tracks actually tell us a lot about the surface, especially this dynamic top layer we've been talking about. The way those tracks are preserved suggests a surface that's constantly being, like, churned up and renewed probably by micrometeoroid impacts, mostly. Wow, it's incredible how much we can learn from something as seemingly insignificant as little dust particles raining down on the moon. Right. It just shows you how complex the lunar environment really is. But let's not forget the bigger picture here. This discovery of widespread water on the moon, it's not just about the practical stuff, like resources. Right. It also completely changes our understanding of the moon's history. It's like the moon is whispering its secrets to us and we're finally starting to listen. What kind of questions do you think this discovery will help scientists answer? Well, for one, we still don't know for sure where all this lunar water came from. I mean, was it delivered by comets and asteroids way back when the moon was forming? Or did it come from inside the moon itself? Hmm. Lunar volcanoes. Maybe. And if that's the case, how much water are we talking about? Those are all questions that future missions, especially ones with even better instruments, will hopefully be able to answer. So many questions. It feels like this discovery has opened up a whole new chapter in lunar exploration. It really makes you wonder what other incredible things are still waiting to be found out there. Exactly. Speaking of incredible things, remember those strange swirls we see on the moon's surface? Oh, yeah. Those are so cool. They look like giant pieces of abstract art. This new research actually looked at those, too. And guess what they found? <laughs> Don't keep me in suspense. 
They found a correlation between those swirls and lower concentrations of water and hydroxyl. Really? So the areas with those cool swirls are like the dry patches on our lunar water map. That's so weird. Why would that be? That's the million dollar question. It suggests there's a connection between those magnetic fields, the ones that probably caused the swirls, and how water is distributed on the moon. That's wild. It seems like every time we learn something new about the moon, we end up with even more questions than we started with. That's the beauty of space exploration. It's all about embracing the unknown. So well said. I think we've definitely learned something today. For starters, it seems lunar water is way more common than we once thought. And way more interesting. Absolutely. And with each new discovery like this one, the idea of humans actually living and working on the moon, well, it starts to feel less like science fiction and more like a real possibility. I think so too. And who knows, maybe one day, thanks to all this lunar water, we'll be looking back at Earth from a thriving lunar outpost, you know, toasting to the ingenuity and curiosity that got us there. Now that's a future I can get behind. Until next time, space fans, keep looking up and never stop questioning. <laughs> you never know what amazing discoveries are just waiting to be uncovered.